All right, folks, friends in YouTube land, Mopar friends. Next update, thought we'd talk about the differential. As you can see, here it is. It's been removed from the car. Two axle shafts. Input drive shaft goes right here from the engine into the pinion, and this is the crown gear. When you turn this, the axles move. I'll show you that. I thought I would talk about this, maybe do a beginner's introduction video for people that, that want to learn about differentials and, uh, and crown gears and stuff like that. But I got a flashlight over here, I gotta grab it. Probably gonna need it and show you inside here. So, I'm not gonna explain exactly how a differential works, but I'm gonna give you an example of it working. I understand how it works. Um, there's some really good YouTube videos that show you how it works. I recommend you watch them. There's an old one, a Chevrolet video from the 50s or 30s or something. And they start with sticks and they build it up into a differential. And they show you how it's really cool. So, this is called a diff carrier assembly. And this is the input pinion shaft here, the drive pinion. So, and this is the crown gear. Let's talk about um, maybe the angle of uh, the crown and pinion. So if you look, I'm laying on the floor here. If you look at this assembly here, the drive power comes in here and there's a gear on the end of that pinion shaft and it drives the crown gear, this piece here. When I spin this, you'll see it turns. So it does when you're driving, just like that. But it's not at the center. The center is up here where the axle is. This is the center of the crown gear, but the pinion gear is down low. It's down much lower down here. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is we're, we're making use of spiral cut gears. These gears have to be cut on a spiral pattern. If you could carry on with that imaginary line, it makes a, a, a spiral. And the reason for that is because we're not at 90 degrees. If this was if the pinion was at 90 degrees right at the center here, those would be cut straight. But we moved them down, so we have spiral cut gears. That, that makes them run quieter. You've always got at least two uh, pinion teeth matched with the crown gear. So it gives you more strength and it's quieter. The, the load of the, the gear load is spread over a wider surface when you have a spiral cut gear as well, compared to straight cut gears. Um, and it can hold a little more torque and horsepower. So it's stronger. And it also allows the, uh, the drive shaft to sit down lower below the floor of the car. If it was up here, we'd lose three or four inches and um, the floor would have to be up higher. And this allows us to, uh, to have a little more room for our passengers and we don't have a hump in the floor because it's down low. Um, in those days, everybody wore a big fedora hat and it was the four inches or three inches you got from the floor would be a benefit for sure because you need room for your hat, right? So, crown and, and pinion gear set. <coughs> Power comes in. And when you're going in a straight line, it turns like this. However, when you take a corner, when you take a, when you take a turn, I, I struggle with the angle of this camera here, so I'm trying to make adjustments, I'm sorry. I want you to be able to see this. When you make a turn, one axle does not turn the same speed as the other because the outer axle is on the outside edge of the turn. It's got to turn faster and the inside one turns slower, but you still need power evenly distributed out. And what a differential does, it allows that to happen. It allows the power to be split between the two axles and they travel at different speeds. So again, straight line, traveling down the road, everything turns together. I can turn these axles like this. That's what it looks like. The gears in the center here are not moving. They're turning together. So we got a gear that's attached to each axle here, and we've got what's called a spider gear here, and it's it's connected to the diff carrier here, this, this housing that holds everything together. And when I hold one axle or make a turn slower, these gears will start to turn and redistribute power. Um, it, let's just say if this one turns twice as fast as that side, um, the, the load is evenly spread. So if this one's turning, whatever, and my math is not great today, but let's just say this is turning at 25 RPM. Let's just call this one 75 RPM. This one's turning at 25 RPM. 
I'll try. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I put the flashlight in my mouth and I'll try and hold it there while I give you an example. I'll hold this axle while I spin this one. You'll see the, 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 the diff gear start to turn. You see that? I was holding this one over here so it could not turn. This one was still turning and it started to turn the gears. If I don't hold anything, like I said, it just goes in a straight line, everything turns. It's a pretty cool invention. I tried to figure out who invented the differential, but the history is kind of foggy. Um, goes back to even Swiss watchmakers way back in the 1700s. And then somebody in France put one in the back of a car. I think he was the first person to use it in a car, but I don't think he's credited with actually inventing it. But it sure works good. It's ingenious. It's brilliant. Uh, so this I took apart. I cleaned it up. I degreased it. And uh, the gears don't have a lot of wear. They're very clean. And they feel good. Everything turns nicely. I don't have any issues with the gear pattern. It looks really nice. I measured backlash. And backlash is the, the, the little bit of a distance between the pinion gear down here and where it matches up with the crown gear. And the spec is between seven, no, six and ten thousandths of an inch. You can hear it. Listen, I'll try to hold the pinion here with my hand and I'll wiggle the crown gear here. A little bit of movement there. Hear it? That's good. I measured it and I measured seven thou. So I'm in the spec, it looks great. I don't have any chipping gears, I don't have any gears chunking out. I don't have any pitting. I've got a good even wear pattern. i got good backlash. I'm gonna put this a, back together. I'm gonna put it back in the car. I'm gonna put a new gasket here where it mounts onto the axle housing. I'm gonna change the pinion seal, which is right here in this end. What happens is I undo this bolt, I slide this flange off the pinion, and then I can pull the seal out and change it. That'll be new. Last thing, last thing to talk about here would maybe be the gear ratio. On the old Plymouth here, and I guess all the old Mopars, they stamp the gear ratio on the gear set here. It's upside down. You won't be able to read it anyways. I know you won't. Camera's not bright enough. It says 4.1 to 1. So, this pinion has to turn 4.1 times around to make that crown gear turn once. That's your final gear ratio. It's fixed. In the transmission, you have sliding gears, you change gear ratios, but everything goes through the drive shaft from the transmission to in here to this fixed ratio, and this is your final gear ratio out to your wheels. Now, being 4.11, that's kind of a, uh, that would be like a tall gear set. Um, for this car, it's a five passenger car. Uh, it, it's, it's fairly large, you can have five people in it. And back in the uh, in the day, in the 30s, I suppose, the speed limit was probably 45, 50 miles an hour, maybe, as all people were traveling. So that was a good mix of a gear ratio to give you, uh, to keep the car in, in a power torque curve that could pull five people around on the way to the car. Now, if you go to a coupe, it's smaller. You can only fit two people in a coupe. Um, the car's a little lighter. That's going to have less payload, of course. This is going to have a three-point five something or 3.7 gear set so it's it's going to have uh, a little bit lower rpm on the highway it's going to feel like it's a little quicker but it's going to be a little bit slower out of the hole maybe um well maybe not because of the weight difference however i don't think i want to change this gear ratio i could drop in a different gear set here crown opinion that would give me like a 3.7 or so gear ratio if i wanted to that would give me a lower lower OP rpm when i'm traveling on the highway however I live up a pretty steep hill. Every day I come home, I climb about a thousand feet, and I'd like to have that gear ratio that allows me to pull that hill in at least second gear and maintain a decent speed. I don't want to uh, have to gear down in the first. We talked about in an earlier video how there's no synchromesh between second and first gear, so I can't be climbing a hill 
in second gear, losing power because I'm loaded up. I got five people in my car. I'm losing power. I'm losing speed. I cannot shove it down in the first right away quickly to climb that hill. There's no synchro mesh. It's going to grind unless I double clutch and match the speed of the gears. And that's going to slow me down even more on a hill. And now I'm going to get the first gear and I'm going to be stuck in first gear climbing that hill. And if I don't have a good gear set, I may not be able to go to second because I'll bog out if I'm loaded up. And quite often we, we, we cram five people in, the, in, the, in these cars to go get ice cream. It's fun. So, and knowing that, I think I'm going to leave the gear set alone for now. Think about it in the future. I do have a little bit bigger engine. I've got a... Uh, 228 1954 228 cubic inch engine in this car so maybe i could go to a a little bit of a lower uh more of a highway friendly gear set we'll see all right back to the diff this is the axle spline goes into the center and matches up with the side diff gears and this end is your bearing it's pressed on um there's a there's a, a step here in the shaft machined you need a you need a hydraulic press to push that off and push a new bearing on these are just timken bearings um this is your cone, and this is your cup. You can get these anywhere, any bearing store. You do not need to try and find 1938 Plymouth bearings. Um, they'll have a Timken number on them. This one does. Uh, the cone happens to be Timken 2502821. And on the back side here, you're going to have the bearing number for the, the cup. I'll order those. I'm going to replace those. I'll go see my friend John again and, and get him to uh, push those off and on with his hydraulic press. So the last thing I'm going to do is, uh, I guess I'll show you underneath here, you can see what I've been up to. Get my flashlight here. Um, of course the axle we pulled out of here. Maybe you can see in there or not. But it goes right through the other side. Tiff bolts in there. Um, cleaning this up. I guess I'll go under there and show you what I've been up to for, for the newbies that are interested in learning. Sorry, sorry about that. This is called your axle housing. Some people call it a, a pumpkin. Uh, banjo housing maybe. Um, it's machined and drilled and this is where the differential sits into and bolts down. There's a gasket here. The axles come in slide in as I showed in your earlier then the drive line is right here, and the drive line bolts probably about there somewhere because we talked about it being, like I said, down low, a little bit lower. Can you see? There's a bit of a, a step in the floor there. Not much. Doesn't really need it. I'm not sure why it's there. The axles are not really not really near the floor at all. So it gives us guys with fedora hats lots of room. Um, this up here is pretty common if you look up here you'll see black looking tar that would be uh, gear oil from the differential might have been a leak here in the gasket in the past oil comes down gets on the drive shaft and spins and it flicks it up there flicks it off and throws it that's what that is not likely to rust it's coated in oil um, what else this is uh, the single brake line from the front master cylinder and this gives you flexibility for your suspension. This wiggles up and down as the car goes over bumps and puts uh, brake fluid to this distribution block right here. There's a block right there and then it goes uh, one to the left wheel, one to the right wheel, the brake lines. I'm going to, here's the top of it, I'm going to make a new brake lines here, two of them, not one, two, replace them, they're old, they're rusty. And I got a new hose for that. Um, I'm going to rebuild this uh, universal joint here. I ordered a new kit. I hope it comes with a leather boot. I'm going to rebuild that. It's old school style. And uh, I don't know. That's about it, I guess, for uh, an introduction to differentials. How to get it apart. I think between the two videos, I've, I've shown a couple of different steps here. How it works, how it goes together. Maybe the last thing we can talk about. There is one more thing would be the uh when when you well, later when you go to put the axles together you slide them slide the axles in and it, it touches in in there it bottoms out there's a block in there i don't know if you can see it can you see that block right there it sits in the middle 
and it moves there. That's a centering block. It's like a, it, it's oblong in the center and it wiggles left and right. When you push your two axles in, it centers on there. The two axles touch that. It's a thrust block and there's a little bit of clearance. And you set that clearance when you install your backing plate. You put a shim on the back there and you, and you pull on your axle and you need like, uh, I think it's between uh, three and eight thou or something. I can't remember. I'm gonna do it later. That's what you're trying to do is get that block centered in the middle. You gotta have both your axles in. You don't wanna be setting your setting your axle end play on the bearing there and testing it with only one axle shaft and you want them both in. And that's what centers the block and allows you to properly set the, uh, the preload on the bearing. And uh, I don't know, I guess that's about it for today. Not really doing brakes yet. I could get to the brakes, but might as well do the differential. Get the diff back in, get the axles in, get the seals on, get the bearings in, then work my way out to the brakes. All right, that's uh, your update for the week. Have a good one.